I've been on holiday and I spent some of that time retreating into one of my favourite hobbies, reading. I don't get enough time when at home to just pick up a book and relax into a good story. Besides work and family, there are video games that need to be beaten. Yes, I could prioritise the book before bed, but all too often it gets left to one side whilst other hobbies dominate. But, sat near the sea, book in hand, I found myself flicking through the pages of an old Doctor Who magazine comic anthology. For anyone not familiar with this, the magazine DWM has been running since the 1970s, a monthly print that, until the pandemic of 2020, offered original, unique comic strips featuring the Doctor and companions going on amazing adventures. And during that period, when Doctor Who was off TV, when they weren't beholden to stick close to a parent TV show, and try and ensure the compatibility with their storylines, they got really creative. Alan Barnes and Scott Gray were the writing team for most of the Paul McGann era, when the audiences only had a single 90 minutes TV movie to base their impressions of the character on. And so creators, both the books, the audio dramas and the comics, got really creative with this character. None more so than Scott Gray. Seriously, the man can write. And you don't need to trust me about that. Trust Russell T Davis, who could not sing enough plaudits about the DWM comic. I'm convinced that he based his series arcs on the format that Scott had pioneered in The Threshold, Glorious Dead and then Oblivion story arcs. These arcs have kindly been collected by Pan and I into a graphic novel. And so it was whilst panning through this issue of Oblivion that I found something profound. I realised and understood that my current disconnect from Doctor Who series 11 and 12 and the current incarnation of the Doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker. Now, one of the most popular videos of this channel has been an examination of the popularity of Doctor Who's modern incarnation, as interpreted by BBC audience figures. Try to cut out opinions with as little bias as possible, that video is purely a numbers game to try and track the peak of the show's popularity and the slope of the decline since then. I'm not blaming Moffat, Chibnall, Capaldi or Whittaker for anything, just observing things that have happened. Actually, compared to what some people may think, the situation is not all doom and gloom. This conclusion at the end of the episode, for anyone who listened, is that things aren't that bad and Doctor Who is still popular, of course it is. Don't listen to what the internet headlines would want you to believe. But it is also true that the show has lost audiences somewhere, and there is a disconnect. I've enjoyed episodes in the new series, I've hated some, but the show has always been a mixed bag. Honestly, the ratio of, of hits to miss hasn't shifted that much. I think previously though, it was more extreme, where the successes were major wow moments, and the failures were overambitious train wrecks. Whereas Chris Chibner, as showrunner, has tried to moderate everything, so it's never quite as good, but never as disastrously bad as it was before. It's just middling. But the internet responded to my video, and the audience reaction has spoken loud and clear. To dismiss all of the negative comments on there as hates and trolls would be a gross disservice to the honest responses I got. Some of them are clearly trolling, but I got a lot of valuable comments. And I've been digesting this for the last six months, as we work towards the next Whitaker and Chibnall series, and I've been trying to work out what I want next year. What course correction am I really looking for? And it was here, in this comic, right in front of me. It had been there all along, penned by Scott Gray in 2001, 20 years ago. A single, perfect issue two-hander between the Doctor and his one companion. To summarise the story, you don't really need to know the details. This is an issue where someone the Doctor cares about has been hurt. As in, really hurt. She's full of emotions, anger, betrayal, pain, fear, a complete terror that her life as she previously knew it is over. And the Doctor's there for her. Yes, he's alien, unknowing, unable to comprehend what she's going through. But he wants to be there. He wants to know. He wants to help. He wants to understand. And as we follow this story through the coming issues, I marvelled at how energetic and athletic Paul McGann looked. Yes, this is a comic strip. The real Paul McGann doesn't look anything like this. 
but the Doctor actually has agency as they stand up for their companion. There's always been a dividing line in the show between people that the Doctor lets into the TARDIS, into this little closed world, and those on the outside. Russell T. Davis explored this in the family relationships with Rose, Martha and Donna. Moffat explored the strangeness of the lives of the people trapped inside this bubble, how if they lost contact with the people on the outside, they became slowly detached from reality. Chibnall wants the best of both worlds. He established pretty early on a fam, a tight knit of a group with a brother, sister and a funky granddad relationship. On paper, it's a good idea but in execution, neither Ryan, Yaz or Graham have had enough time to really develop as their own characters. All of them have had hints, tangible threads that have been laid down, almost all of which could have been a brilliant character arc. However, the closest we got to one was Graham's anger about the loss of his wife and a complete about face there at the end of series one. But in this dynamic, the characters don't have their own agency. And whilst I'm sure that the Doctor does care about them, she still treats them as pets. She's rude to them, she ignores them, forgets about them, and then assumes that they're still going to follow her around blindly. So many scenes are of her striding forwards, with the three of them trailing behind like obedient pets. And when the show wants to go into exposition mode, the Doctor just talks to herself now, not to them, providing both the questions and the answer to herself whilst they stand around, gawping in amazement at how brilliant she is. But for me, the moment when I realised that the fam dynamic was in serious trouble it was when Graham expressed a moment of pure fear to the Doctor. He opened up to her and told her he was scared his cancer was coming back. He told her and she ignored him. She ignored him and then ran away. I'm not quite sure what this scene was meant to achieve. Cancer isn't a plot thread that comes back and it has no bearing on Graham's character. This scene is purely meant to be an interaction between the two who clearly hadn't had enough shared dialogue in this episode. The episode was about mental health, and so the writing team clearly hoped that showing the team opening up about their fears was a positive move, but this good work is completely undone by Jodie Whittaker's reaction. I wasn't the only one perturbed by this scene. Enough people wrote in to ask if it was appropriate to have a role model like the Doctor act like this on such a clearly emotive topic that people care about. The BBC even went on record defending the moment, offering the intention of the scene was to acknowledge how hard it can be to deal with conversations on this subject matter. When faced with these situations, people don't always have the right words to say at the right time, and this can often lead to feelings of guilt. By showing the Doctor struggling to find the right words, the intention was to sympathise with all those who may have found themselves in similar positions. When Graham opened up to the Doctor about his fear of his cancer returning, her response was never meant to be dismissive. The Doctor's friend was scared and we see her struggling to deal with the severity of the situation. And I get that. I get that the Doctor's always meant to be aloof and struggling to fully provide the correct human response to a situation. And this conversation, the way it was presented, was uncomfortable. I've been in situations where you've been told difficult things and you don't know how to process it. You don't know what the person needs. Do they want you to interject, to apologise, to say you're sorry, even though it's not your fault, to ask if you can help, for you to just nod and show that you've listened? We find these kinds of interactions hard, and therefore an alien with only a basic level of the human experience whose whole life has been about seeking adventure and curiosity and avoiding the domestic, would be uncomfortable. But the Doctor's also a character that has wanted to care, that always gone to bat for the select few that they bring into the TARDIS. Even when they can't possibly understand the scope of the problem, they are the character who's taken an interest. Often, the character's flaw has been one of arrogance, making out that they do understand when in reality they don't have a clue. The Doctor ever since the show arrived over 50 years ago, was someone who would offer hope even when there was none, and then later when forced to step up, would find a way to make reality match their bravado. But the 13th Doctor, as written and played so far, 
is that one step further removed from all of us. She likes the concept of companions. She likes the idea of a captive audience, but she's lost the ability to truly relate to them. She's full of compliments about how brilliant they are, but that seems hollow, unearned, ephemeral, and compared to her own brilliance. Previous doctors did this as well. Once they brought someone in, they became self-obsessed with bigging that person up, of justifying their greatness because they were one of the selected few allowed aboard the TARDIS. But the fam dynamic means that the 13th Doctor is flinging platitudes around left, right and centre without quite as close a personal one-on-one -on -one connection to any individual as the previous Doctors enjoyed. For all of their alien qualities, look in Capaldi, Smith, Tennant or Equiston's eyes when they're faced with suffering and you will see empathy and pain, often before anger or resolve. When Whittaker sees suffering, her mind moves three steps forwards, skipping the empathy and going straight to the resolution. The problem is specific to the writing here. When out on her own, Jodie has managed to offer speeches of hope. It's been pointed out online that the recording she made during the 2020 pandemic and uploaded online to offer reassurance to Doctor Who fans is actually the perfect response that she should have given to Graham when he voiced his fears about his cancer. It's warm. It's comforting. It's a promise of safety and security around the corner. It's doctorish. The more I focus on this, the more I see it as a deliberate choice from Chris Chibnall to make the character seem more alien again. It's a deliberate choice the show has made before with both Colin Baker and Peter Capaldi, and both times the show arguably suffered for it. Audiences embrace a character who is an alien. Audiences like the bizarre and weird in this show, and they treasure that when done right, Doctor Who can be one of the most unexpected and creative shows out there. But the character's alien qualities have never been one that acts as a barrier between them and their friends. They've never been too self-involved to appreciate the world around them. Reading through the comments of my video, I see a lot of accusations that the show has become woke. And I ask, really? Because I have in my hands a comic strip written 20 years ago where the Doctor comforts a recently transitioned bikini-clad fish lady and ruminates with her about how she should see her new life as an opportunity. The problem is not that Doctor Who tackles woke topics, it's that the main character has mentally advanced to the point that she's no longer able to recognise the issues from a human perspective, and therefore were unable to recognise or empathise with her perspective. It's taking these issues and scaling them up to be larger than any one individual and losing that personal touch. But none of this is new. It's a phase, a momentary alignment of all the writers, actors, directors, and everyone else involved in casting the character to be this way at this time. The show changes, as it has always done, and this will just be a fleeting moment in its history. Paul McGann's time as the Doctor was momentary, but it led to a wellspring of creativity that followed his passing, and it gave us moments like this. For a new generation, a new audience, Jodie Whittaker is doing exactly the same. And although I like Graham and Ryan as individuals, Graham in particular, the death of the fam dynamic in 2021 and the slimming down of the TARDIS team can only be a good thing. I hope having just one or two close companions to care about, to obsess over, will force this character to grow out of their social awkwardness and develop into the heroine she should have been all along.